Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Turn Right Machine Works. My name is Keith, and we're in here at the Plasma Cam again, and uh, we have our pipe cutter attachment uh, set up on on the machine, and we're anxious to use it. Uh, we thought, actually, we didn't think <laughs> that uh, we were going to set this up, and we were going to do the cutout that we needed to cut out a chute opening and a trap door to get in and clean it out. And this is a hollow tube that's going to be for a muscle washer that we're replicating uh, an example of one that's outside we've taken apart some of the things and we're not really doing a video on that project per se but throughout my my videos here you'll probably see it time to time on on uh, what we got going on in the shop now I do have to get this cut and we're going to go ahead and we're going to cut this with uh, manual attachments that I'll put on the torch. Then we'll get this off of here and we're going to get some kind of material in here because we need to see this pipe cutting attachment go to town. All right. Um, what I have is I have this set up in it on my rollers. These actual rollers here are one of the two sets that I had back when I did Larry Mahan's mast. I had his um, mass for the uh, the forward mass and the main mass on these rollers and that's how I rolled the mast around and did all the welding and kept it nice and true and straight and these these uh, these rollers are just they're lock solid they don't have a trunnion like my shaft straightening rollers but they do have uh, a nice span on them that really lets you hold diameters. I think uh, Larry Mahan's uh, main mass was 14 inch diameter and then we had uh, a 10 or 11 inch diameter on the forward mass. Um, so getting a chance to use these, this really comes in handy to be able to do pipe and such. Now I have a sheet of aluminum inside and uh, that's going to come into play to protect the inside wall of this. I don't want to do any scraping. I don't want to have a dirty wall inside. And when you, when you plasma cut stainless steel, stainless flies through the air and sticks on the inside of the pipe. And actually, I'm part of the pipe cutting attachment. We're going to be, we're going to be cutting a lot more pipe. And we're going to be concerned about that. Um, and just in the past of cutting through on stainless steel items, whether it be box pipe or whatever, that spray comes and it acts just like a flame spray and it sticks to the other side. Sometimes pretty hard to where you've got to grind it off of there. Um, all right, I have a straight edge up here and uh, that's to help me guide my, my torch holding it in the hand. We're gonna get that set up and up here. Lots of time I get asked, uh, you know, what would I do without this? And, uh, and actually, I, I show you in my earlier videos, when I put this whole plasma cam together, the draft, suction, the cowling, the water tray, the computer cabinet, all of these shapes were all cut out by hand. And I used uh, this hand, hand cutting guide kit from Thermodynamics. Thermodynamics, and I get asked a lot, Thermodynamics Cutmaster 81 is my power supply for the, the, the plasma table. This plasma table, we call the plasma cam, I get asked, well, who makes that? Well, plasma cam makes the plasma cam. There's also a couple other uh, machines that they, they are tied in with, but this is the actual plasma cam, and I also am asked uh, what software do I use in this to create the uh, CNC and I use the design edge software that is supplied by PlasmaCam for this machine and uh, I'm pretty pretty happy uh, I give you the straight scoop <laughs> sometimes I'm called on the telephone sometimes I'm emailed hey give me the straight scoop I am giving you the straight scoop okay this smiles on my face with this machine and I don't think you've ever seen my face not smile. I mean, I did have a, a replacement of the gantry rail when I first got it, and there was no problem. The, 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 the support from plasma cam is just top notch, okay? Now, this kit 
that I use. It does circles, straight lines, and all kinds of different things. I have uh, a magnetic uh, pivot, a suction cup pivot, um, and, and so on. Basically, all I'm going to need for my project here is the actual straight inline guide. And these two rollers will fit on here. And when I get this slipped on there, I'll check and we'll set the actual cutting tip height off of there. And sometimes if you're cutting straight in the line this way here, you're going to be a little bit, um, you're going to have to adjust it for that height. And when you're straddling around, this is not too much of a curve, but sometimes on curves, you got to extend those out because you got to maintain that clearance. That clearance is roughly about a 3 16ths of an inch, 190 thousandths is an average starting point for your height of cutting, even if you're cutting with the machine to start off with the pierce height. After that, the cut height, sometimes that can drop just a little bit and you get a better edge depending on your speed and all of that with your material. All right, so we got that to the side. So let me go ahead and I'm gonna pop off the torch here. We're not gonna be, we're not gonna be using the, the cutting attachment here. And we pump off the glove and just set down there. Okay. Now this is this is my contact tip for cutting plate and, and so on. And I'll go ahead and I'll set that off to the side. This is uh, my manual or hand mode tip. Let's that nozzle really stick out there and you can get in you can get in close to edges and all kinds of things like that okay this rolling guide slips right over the outside just goes down with a thumb screw there and then these two thumb screws will adjust your wheels all right and what i do is i hold it up here and then i have to adjust these down there's a couple lines on them that uh, can give you an idea of making them even on both sides here All right, that's about 3 sixteenths of an inch up. All right, now, depending on what side of the line you want to hold center of your torch, I set this bar to guide it, and of course I was setting it if I was going to be cutting and saving the inside here, and I need to set it the other way so that I'm saving, so I'm saving the outside. One is basically 80 thousandths over from the other. The width or curve width you cut, the material blown away, uh, is the difference of what side of the line or the distance away from the line that I want to bring here and this is not exact um, precision we're just trying to make them equal and even okay I like that let's take a look at what we got here okay I'm gonna live with that all right our aluminum is in here our ground is on here the torch is in the manual mode so we can go ahead and turn on our power supply um, we did install our bypass switch and uh, that can go up there and bypass that just that just means that there's no there's no automated triggering that's all it means with this up and bypass that torch is the same as if you carried your plasma supply out into the field and turn your switch on all right there's a safety on on the torch itself when you have it apart it automatically shuts down the machine uh, so you don't you can change your components out in the field away from your machine You don't even have to shut off your machine when you unscrew the uh, the outside shield uh, Your your torch automatically shuts down you can change out your electrode your contact and all that you screw it back on the machine comes back on um, so We'll go ahead and we'll go on over and we'll set up or turn on our machine and uh, Then we'll come back. I'm not sure about setting or turning on the draft if I had a blank, a heat blanket that would go over this and clog off that other end and let the air draw in here, I would do that. I'll probably just turn the ventilation on to create a negative flow in this building 
Um, I do have that wall uh, fan sucking out right now. So we're really going to be showing you how much flume is going to be coming out from cutting stainless steel, which is quite a bit. And um, you know, I'm going to be I'm going to be do doing this in short bursts. And we're also going to be finding out how much we got to get rid of that is caused. And it's one of the things that I've been thinking about the last couple of years of waiting to put this in play is how to control the fumes and sparks and everything else from this this attachment. And because I've I've controlled I've controlled it excellent on my table. You look at my carriage, my machine, the yellows are yellow and the blues are blue. Of course, these look like they're brand new because they've been sitting in the box for a year and a half or so. Um, uh, just because I had a problem with the depth of my water tray and I wasn't able to stick these, these uh, attachments down in there and I knew that once I had to set up, I'm gonna wanna cut off the end, I'm gonna wanna do a lot of different things. I want it in its full potential. And uh, now I'm going to be able to do that and I'll be giving you a show on that. So let me turn on my machine now and let's, let's get going. Okay, we've got, we've got our draft suction on over there. We have the wall fan going. I got my nice uh, coverall glasses that I can see. And one thing that's nice about this tip, you can slightly angle it. All right, now I'm gonna start right in the corner of where I want here, and then we're gonna go off to the end here. With this guide here, I'm able to keep my steadiness side to side and it gives me a really nice cut. All right, here we go. Okay, now I'm gonna go open up my door because we're getting more fumes up high in here. It is going out my fan. This actually seems to be nice and clear down here. I'm not breathing into that stuff, but I did get down off my stool pretty fast. I can see that flying out on both sides. I'm glad I got this in here because I can see that surface and that material right there. I'll get a close up picture of that. So let's get this door open and get set up for our next cut. This next cut, I have put a board over that half of the table. I put my regular throw downs around the rollers here. I put one blanket that would block the rollers and down to the table. And then I draped another A cloth, a simulated A cloth, you can't use A cloth no more, um, down over the end of the table so that it's actually going to be creating a draw of current of air through and sucking it down into my vending system for the table and now this will be a test to see how much actually comes out here i went ahead and i reshut my door i do have the back door open cracked a little bit because when i run the fans and i run the plasma cam it will suck my uh flu in reverse on my wood stove and uh, fill this this room up with um, wood smoke um, which doesn't doesn't take too much to reverse the airflow when you're talking about the volume you're drawing in on the table or on my wall uh, fan there all right I wanted to talk about this a little bit before I actually fire it off because once I do start to draft the way this is here it howls pretty good all right so I'm just going to go ahead and grab my gloves now and uh, hop up on my chair again. This is going to be two cuts. I'm going to take a straight cut on the little hatch that's at the other end and the other half of this trough entrance right here and 
let's just see what happens. If we can improve that draft and we can draw out that, that flume uh, with this cut. All right, actually it's uh, the noise level right here. My head is less than it is when you're down on the ground. glasses on. All right, this is the shortcut first. Hey, not bad. This is this is pretty cool. All right. Here goes the second cut. Big difference, big difference. Last three cuts, and they're gonna be in line. I'm gonna do those two over there, then I'm gonna have to reach in here and slide my aluminum this way here to make sure that I get this one here. So far, other than just a little staining, we haven't stuck any any stainless flame spray to the side. All right. That feels good to me right there. I've already adjusted this so that my contact tip is uh, adjusted to the right height and clearance. <laughs> uh, let's add some suction here. that top cloth this way so I could have a little bit more um, okay and I'm gonna need to roll this as I go I think that looks good Uh, we've cleaned out our blankets. We're about ready to lift, lift this thing on down. And, uh, you know, it's almost blowing a hole through this aluminum. Of course, this is flashing. It's only about 15,000, 20,000 thick. But this is enough and throwaway material compared to having to clean up on the inside of this. This can, this can be cleaned out now by a little foxtail and would be dusting that out there's nothing in here so it, it's relatively nice and clean now here's the here's the first piece here and you can almost you can almost poke your hole through there and you can see poke your finger through there and you can see that uh, now this is this is 15 
15 and a half inches to the outside, 15 on the inside. That's 15 inches away, okay? And it's flame spraying that surface, and that would be stuck to the inside of here. But just knowing ahead of time saved myself so much work on having to clean that out. And especially if you were cutting into something that had to be a finished nice surface on the inside, you need to protect it, okay? Okay, one of the first things you got to do when you're running the pipe attachment here, and I'm following the instructions, and it's actually having me set the rollers for the size pipe, all right? And then in, in the software, I punched in four inch diameter pipe. That's what, you, that's what our outside diameter is. So it says there's two measuring points right here on the rollers. There's two flats. And as, as this comes up, these come together, and it gives me a dimension of five, 29 or so on on that thickness there so what I do is go ahead and I can put this up on the bench and loosen these up as well and that's what I'm gonna do Right. Now as these as these come up here, they come together. Then we go ahead and we take our dial calipers and we'll measure across here. Okay, there's uh, five, four, five. So it's still got to come up some more. All right, we're we're within five thousandths right there. That's going to be well enough. I think uh, it, you know everything in the program is is decimals and as long as we got them really close to each other from table end to table end we're going to be holding pretty well parallel so next we're going to go ahead and we're going to lay our pipe in here okay the next thing you set or in the settings it tells you for this diameter which belt to use um, in, in in setup. All right, it asked me for the short belt, so that's this one here. So you have to <clears throat> bring this all the way over, get it on the inside of your rollers here. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and lower this down now. This roller right here is gonna touch the top of that pipe. All right, we can roll the pipe. You can see that flexing around. We're gonna leave it flexing around because it's, it, this pipe is not exactly round and I think it's gonna be better to let it flex around than it will be to lock this down on, on here exactly tight here. All right, now it asks us to go ahead and route this belt around there, around there and then this little roller here is actually your tensioner. Pull that way there and it tensions that up. All right, so I'm gonna come around onto that side and tension that up. We're gonna go ahead and we're pulling back with the Allen wrench. Okay, there we go. I'm going to tension that up. <laughs> I put my torch over there because we're going to have to do adjustment on my uh, pump weight uh, hold down because of the uh, height position of the torch in relationship to the pipe cutting attachment, how close it puts it to there. We're going we're gonna to raise it up uh, one screw depth there. And of course, uh, you can't continually run things spinning around because your ground clamp has got to go on to one end of the, uh, the pipe here. So <clears throat> we're going to be doing that. But uh, our carriage moves side to side and up and down and our pipe rolls around. Okay, everything is ready to go. They do offer you uh, a guard to put on here.
and tighten the wing nut just in case you're you're jump roping or something and, and you don't want to get caught in there pretty cool all right uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna adjust my hold down on my pop away here on the uh, carriage and then I think we're gonna draw something out and get ready to cut it There are a lot of a lot of firsts today, and uh, it didn't go off without a hit. <clears throat> okay, we just came over here and shut off our vacuum, and <clears throat> we learned a little suction 101 about how much heat you're actually creating. And I had the bag over that in there, and I was creating the, a, a good amount of draft. This, but the heat and everything else coming out of that torch, I'm focusing right on down this pipe right here, and right into this uh, hose. And um, you know, I had the empty shop back, so there was nothing fire, in, you know, that can go in there. Um, and actually, the the fiber or the uh, paper filter. <clears throat> no damage to it at all, but my hose actually uh, caved in at the end there. I wasn't getting any suction. It collapsed right here at the uh, at the the nozzle going into the the vacuum. Um, so I am now. I'm gonna have to buy me a new hose here, and uh, we got to find some other way to create that same. That it didn't take much draft to create a really nice cut there. But it, it did sacrifice um, a hose, and um, you know, getting a hose for every part that you're going to do, it's it's not too economical there. All right, we didn't get in too much trouble besides burning up our hose there, and uh, and we'll get a new one there. Uh, right now, um, we're probably going ahead and cut off the end there, and we'll move this pipe over, and I think we might drag out that engraving uh, attachment for the plasma cam and do some engraving on a round item as well. 
All right, until the next video, get her done. Okay, folks, um, suction 101. <laughs> Do not use your regular rubber hose to suck out of the pipe you're cutting on. Smoke me a kipper, Skipper. I'll be back for breakfast. <laughs>